Today, I'm gonna to be taking you on a tour of the one acre vegan farm. Everything from what I've got growing, what I will be growing, and how I'm watering it. Stay tuned. Hello, it is almost May, and I'm out here on the one acre vegan farm and wanted to go ahead and show you guys an update on how everything is doing and growing. As you can tell, I've got landscape fabric down, things growing inside of it. So I'm gonna turn this camera around and we're gonna get started on uh, kind of giving you a free or a preview of everything that we do have growing and things that we will have um, to harvest and eat and hopefully available to sell here coming up in a month or two. The first thing I wanted to show you is our landscape fabrics. We've got three here, two more down there so far, but in this one I have dino kale, which I'll we'll walk down here and see. It actually starts right here and goes all the way down there. So a lot, a lot, a lot of dino kale. And we'll zoom in. It's looking really good, actually. I'm really happy with how it's looking. And since we're down here, I guess I'll show you the drip irrigation, which I'm gonna do a whole video on if you haven't seen that already. But we've got our frost-free hydrant that I ran out here from my well pump house over there. Ran that down here. I've got a backflow preventer. We've got my timer. We've got a pressure regulator, a filter, and then it's running out here to these manifolds that I built, which I'll show you this one. So they're all running to a T, which has an on-off switch, and then it goes to half-inch PV or half-inch poly tubing, and it's going to my drip lines. And this way, I can turn it off. And these are on; these are actually screw on and off, so I can take this off and I can move my drip in the whole bed at once. And then when we get back down there, I'll actually show you the flow through system that I'm working with. But here's all my dino kale. And then one thing you might notice is I've actually got my pathways have landscape fabric on them. That is strategic, so I'm doing the least amount of weeding as possible. I've got some other things that I'm working on so that I don't long term have to use plastics like these. But in a market style garden, it's kind of the best option. Down this row, we have cabbage and broccoli and Brussels. Here is some Napa cabbage, purple cabbage. I think this is broccoli. One's looking really good, but it's all responding really well. This has been out here, these have been out here for less than two weeks or right around two weeks now and they're or less than two weeks and they're looking really good about a week and a half a week and a half and so one other thing that i'm doing is actually when i have something that dies or doesn't take like you'll always have is i'm going ahead and putting in marigolds that i've started or any other um predatory insect um that you, uh, a plant that uh, brings in predatory insects. So that's what I'm doing there. I've got them scattered about. We've got more dino kale, the purple kale, premier kale, which is a mixture of collards and kale. And then we'll step over here. We've got some sunflowers as a bit of a hedge. We've got marigolds, some arugula, lettuce, Quite a bit of lettuce and then more dino kale. We really like dino kale. We've got Swiss chard and there's some chard. This is a pink, red, this is a yellow there. And then another marigold in the mix. And then this whole row here, I'll just show you, is all beans, which are growing really well. A bunch of different types of beans. I'm gonna let them get to a certain height and then I'm going to go in, I think I'm gonna to Florida to weave them. I don't wanna stake up each individual one, but we'll see. Here is some tree lettuce, which grows upright and it's pretty neat. You can just take it off there, get these nice leaves for say like a salad mix. So that's a keeper so far. And another marigold in there, some more tree lettuce. And then this is cauliflower, 
So cauliflower looking good. There's the beans. Then here is a full bed of salad greens. So all of our lettuce, which is looking really, really well. How I come in here and harvest it is I'll actually go ahead, grab this, take a knife, and just go about an inch or two from the base of that plant, and you'll get a bunch of salad greens that look just like this and that are tasty and crisp and just out of this world. And they're vegan, so that's a plus. We've got a bunch of different types of lettuce here. This is like a tongue lettuce like I have in my hand here. We've got an oak leaf lettuce, and then we've got some different bib lettuces in there and some frilled lettuce, so. The drip irrigation is working pretty good. The lettuce is kind of taken off since adding this drip in here. Um, it kind of just goes with the flow on this because I need to actually resize these beds because this used to be the start of where I had my beds, but I wanted to start it over there and I resized the beds a bit, so I had to do a little work, but oh well. So these will all be kind of like this lettuce bed will shift over just a little bit. You can see that the drip is, I'm kind of having to run it instead of running it straight. I'm having to run it to the side a bit. So that's just uh, a thing you go through as you're transitioning. These are all collard greens and um, bitter greens that have gone to seed. I'm kind of bringing in, trying to bring in some beneficial bugs uh, before I take everything down and add it to the compost. Here is my famous kale, which I come out and harvest every single morning. I'll pull one off there. It's been going to seed, so I've had to kind of battle that back and forth, but I've been able to harvest enough for a smoothie every morning. It'll be, I'll be excited when the dino kale gets up there because that's really good for smoothies. So we've got beans, or no, these are peas, which I came through and picked peas. You know, a lot of these, like these right here, I started them way too early, didn't get them into the ground quick enough. I'm better off and I will just go ahead and start new seed and get it in here because it, it'll take off better than these old ones will. You can kind of see those didn't go well. I've got some more beans. I think these are lima beans. And then I've got a good amount starting here and here of chickpeas that seem to be taking off really well. They're looking really good. They responded well. A lot of new growth since getting it in there. I'm excited to grow those. Got, and then this was just a bit of miscellaneous stuff. So we've got premier kale, curly kale, dino kale, curly kale, going all the way down here. And then we've got some mint. This is spearmint. This spearmint has actually been in my family for about 18 years now. My mom got it a long time ago. I had a, this, <laughs> this landscape fabric was 50 foot and for some reason, I ran my drip way too long. I was like trying to look at that and measure. I didn't measure it, I should have. And I had all this extra space, so I planted in some, ooh, there's a bird. I planted in some lettuce to go in where I had my emitters. So we'll see how that goes. I've got some uh, sunflowers that are growing here. Again, hopefully to bring in some beneficial bugs. This was just kind of a uh, free for all. I've got some beets, actually carrots there, and uh, we'll see how those do. If they don't do good, I'll add in some more kale or lettuce. We've got upland cress, which is something new I'm growing this year. A really fun flavor. It's a bit of a brassica, and uh, it grows really well, apparently. So we've got mint and basil, and uh, We got basil, some mint, that is actually orange mint, which is really neat. It has a kind of a round leaf, but that's really tasty. Peppermint, which that's a striated version that I want to get some more starts going because I really like how it looks. Got buzz buttons, which if you don't know what a buzz button is, it's used in some different drinks and you can use the leaves in salads but uh, that will numb your mouth. It's called the toothache plant, the Chinese toothache plant or the Szechuan button. Really fun. I've got a good amount of those growing. They propagate really easily. We've got some more mint, some different, or not mint, sorry, basils. 
Those are leaf type basils. It's like a bug. Might have touched on that one a little bit. We'll see here. This is a spicy, I think a spicy globe type basil. So good there. Uh, we've got, oops, sorry, kind of didn't show you here, but a lot of lettuce. This is just leaf lettuces. This is a frilled type lettuce. Really tasty, good to add in salad mixes, and it grows really well. Uh, the spacing, so I would recommend, if you're gonna grow this type of lettuce, I would definitely space it closer, but uh, this was just a fabric that I had. I didn't actually burn holes in it, and I had to use the space up, so if I end up growing this for the next four or five weeks and have to remove it, it's not a big deal. This is just kind of a space saver, so, and a great space saver because you can grow the lettuce in there. And there's some more lettuce. I need to re restart some of these. Uh, I don't, they didn't take off really good in this bed. Uh, some more lettuce there. And then Dr. Miller who came out here. I had to take a little break from the video in between the mint and basil. My neighbor came out, talked to him. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll show you what we have going on in the greenhouse. Well, outside of the greenhouse, I've got my tomatoes that I started that are looking really good. I've got peppers, so four things of peppers. I've got my aubergines, or eggplants. We call them eggplants, three different types. I've got the compost pile. I've already showed you this, but you can see it's actually running. We've got 42 minutes left on that cycle. So let me run here and see if I can find an emitter that is dripping away. Yeah, right there. If you can tell, a little bit of water coming off of it. That's all we want. Getting that kale nice and good. But outside of the greenhouse, I've got a flat of oak leaf lettuce. It's a 125 flat. A flat of a green leaf lettuce. And then that is a flat for my father-in-law. So a bunch of different kales, collar, or not a bunch of different kales and lettuces. And then there's my cucumber flat. So excited about that. Inside the greenhouse, since it's been so hot, I haven't put a ton in here. And it's kind of a mess because I've been doing a lot of work around the farm, but there are the marigolds that I've been interplanting in between things that have died. We've got some dino kale, which I'm gonna give to a friend that was just asking about some. We've got sunflowers, some wildflowers, a flat of just anonymous stuff that I was trying, but we've got, um, this is red malabar spinach. So I'm gonna get that planted out there. I'll get that planted where I can vine it up actually. Um, this is another flat for my, oh, sorry. I'm getting you shooken around there. This is another flat for my father-in-law. These are propagated mints that I have for him. Some buzz buttons and some basils and then dino kales. And there's just some, this was my original flat that you probably saw in my how to propagate mint video or my mastering propagation video but uh, I've taken cuttings and started new cuttings and that's kind of what I'm left with and then my basil flat so that's all looking really good come out here well I hope you guys all found this helpful informative or entertaining this is the garden update here at the start of May We've got a lot of things going, we've got a lot of things growing, and hopefully we'll have a lot of things to eat and harvest and potentially market or sell, but uh, we'll be happy if we just have enough to eat. It's really just a big test experiment, the one acre vegan, far vegan farm. I have about, what we saw here was about an eighth of an acre. By the end of the summer, the goal is to have a quarter of an acre or more in production. Everything's growing really well. Now that I have the drip irrigation going, it's pretty much automated. So I get things in and I really don't have to worry about them. Something doesn't take, uh, I can go in and you know I'll have to replant there. But that's everything out here. I hope you found it helpful. If you saw anything you'd like another video on or you'd like some more information on, please let me know. I know I'm either going to or have done a video on my compost, how I do it, why I do it and uh, what all is entailed in there. Uh, an update on the greenhouse I know will be coming up and then just keep, I will keep updating just the farm, how everything's growing. So you kinda gotta see how the kale's doing, how the uh, collards are doing, how everything's doing and uh, we'll keep you posted on it. So I am Plant Based Gabriel. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check out one of the videos, the One Acre Vegan Farm playlist or the Healthy Vegan Recipe playlist. Check out plantbasedgabriel.com and just watch some videos, have some fun, grow some food, and uh, be healthy. See you guys.